Totally. Thanks for having me. Um, good to meet you all. If we haven't met, my name's Amelia. Um, I'd love to connect with you afterwards. So hit me with a message on LinkedIn um, or my emails at the end. But it's great to meet you all. Super happy to be here. Um, we're going to talk about leading effective meetings. And I am going to tell you a little bit about me. Firstly, um, I am here in Austin, born and raised here. Um, shout out to any Austinites out there. We uh, run our business out of Austin and don't foresee ourselves ever leaving. We just bought our first home here and have recently finished renovations. So we're super excited about that. Um, I got my undergraduate degree from Texas A&M. I studied things like communications and leadership. And then um, in my postgraduate, I went to the University of Notre Dame and I studied um, management. So a lot of like business, finance, marketing, accounting, all of the things. Um, and then my professional background is mostly in marketing and digital media. And I also do social media consulting on the side. That's like my little passion project is teaching brands about how they can use their voice to bring in consumers. And um, I also do social media myself um, on Instagram as well as TikTok. And my handles are Amelia M. Hiller for anyone that wants to be friends over there. Um, I love to utilize social media to promote local businesses in Austin and tell people about how to have good, um, clean fun in Austin. It's great. I am the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Pillar. Pillar is a woman-owned, family-run staffing firm based here in Austin, but we work all around the country. We specifically focus in tech, but we staff in everything. We staff in for project managers, for consulting, and things like that. Um, pretty much anybody that needs people will come to us, and we will um, staff their roles. So uh, primarily my main focus right now, since I'm the director of strategic partnerships is looking for those clients who have these open roles that they might not have the time to fill, or they might not have the expertise to go along and fill those roles. And we will fill them for them. And we're a small company. And so we're able to work really, um, in an agile way to staff those roles. So if you're hiring or know anyone that's hiring, hit me up. So to work with effective meetings, um, the main thing that I hear with clients and people that I'm working with, and if you spend a lot of time in higher ed, there's a lot of BS meetings out there and there's a lot of wasted time and there's a lot of connections that could have been made that weren't made. And so effective meetings to me are avoiding all of those things. Um, the first thing I like to focus on is to make sure that you know your audience, know who you're talking to and to know how to cater to that audience. And that might be, how old they are, who they are, what generation they're in, how they work, what their personality is like. I recently took a course who, where the professor made everybody take a personality test beforehand so he could know how to best serve his students. And that was so cool to know that I'm a visual learner, so I got the visual tools and things like that. Um, and when you're working on teams that are smaller, you know how to talk to people and encourage them. And um, it's best before meetings to establish your goals with yourself and at the beginning of the meeting and be prepared, create an agenda that should go without saying. But I think we, we have all been in meetings probably recently where it seemed to be no agenda was made. Um, also, don't expect anyone else to facilitate. I don't know if any of you guys have gotten on meetings where it's a bit awkward at the beginning because it feels like nobody's willing to take the ball and run with it. And um, it's best to just know to do it yourself if you're the one leading. During the meeting, I think it's most important to make sure that your audience knows you and knows your context. I personally listen 100 times better if I know who I'm talking to and where they come from and what they do best. And um, I'm also on, was on a meeting last week where my co-founder of my business was not smiling he was completely frowning the entire time and we had gotten off the meeting and the woman that we were meeting with was you know my age a little bit bubbly and a little bit more like personable and I had to tell my coworker, like don't forget to smile because she's not going to be receptive to what you're saying so making sure you're hitting those um, emotional intelligence points 
even when you're meeting remotely, um, it's super important. We're at the end of the day, we're just humans working a job, pretending that we know what we're doing. Um, I love to take rough notes during a meeting. And the reason I say rough is because I think you're not focusing too much on your notes to where it's distracting, but you're taking notes to where you know what you're saying and you know what is going to be important post-meeting to better allow you to delegate tasks after your meeting. Um, keeping the meeting on track without getting in the way of the flow. So what I mean by that is people will interject and that's sometimes super helpful in your meetings, where, whether they're redirecting you as the manager who might not know the nitty gritty of what's going on um, with the lower level of the team, or you know, you're getting to know each other a little bit better. But if it comes to a point where there's this unnecessary fluff that isn't workflow, that isn't helping your team cultivate a certain culture of getting to know each other, that's where you can start redirecting back into the work environment. But um, just making sure that the full enjoyment and culture of your meeting is kind of setting in the way with your goals. Um, keep time for collaboration. That kind of goes in the same breath. Um, you wanna open it up and ask open-ended questions to where um, you're as a manager, not being too exposed to the bias that you're running the meeting, everything that you say is correct and you know everything that's going on, um, those are super helpful things to do. And the notes kind of coincide with that. Um, at the end of the meeting, I love to give a quick summary because then when you look at your notes post-meeting and add to them, you're establishing action items to everyone. And those aren't really coming as a, much of a surprise because you summarize the meeting at the end. And the summary at the end also gives you another time to reiterate the main points you wanted to key out through the message, especially when a flow state is started and you want to come back to your main points. <clears throat> so after a meeting, I talked about those rough notes. You wanna review those notes, refine them and add to them. And if relevant, share them with your team. I think it's really cool to lead by example in this way and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And kind of shows like, this is almost what I expect from you guys. And um, Let's keep everyone on task in that way. And then follow-ups, whether it's somebody stressed about something and they mentioned something personal or you're following up just in legitimate workflow processes or you are signing actions that are necessary. Whether you use Asana or not, I think it's super beneficial to assign action items. Um, and Asana is a great tool. If you haven't heard of it, um, we use a free version and it's been awesome. Collect um, feedback if necessary. I think it's awesome the time after you talk to individuals post-meeting, be like, hey, what did you think about that meeting? Did you get anything from it? Did I miss anything? Um, and kind of let them know that they have power also. And at the end, just lead by example. You know, you're not taking too much of their time. They're not going to take too much of yours. If you're being concise, they'll be encouraged to be that way too. And if you're being kind, I think it just all kind of lays out the groundwork um, and just lets the meeting be most effective as possible. I personally think that most effective meetings are pretty quick. Um, and I think that that's a big consensus post COVID as well. It's like, wow, we waste so much time, but in the same breath, not losing that human connection and making sure that our team knows each other and how each other works best. And yeah. That's me, and um, that's how I personally lead meetings effectively. And does anyone have any questions or comments? And here's that email I talked about. Awesome, thanks, Amelia. Those are great points. I think you hit on a lot of things that you could go deep on. Totally. Any of them. Um, please totally. put your questions in the chat or otherwise just unmute yourself if there's a break in the conversation, but in the chat, I think is a great place. I was just wondering, Amelia, kind of first question to kick things off. How, how do you set uh, or how do you approach setting expectations with the attendees of a meeting, whether mm -hmm. they're internal or external, so that mm -hmm. they know coming in how to be effective, like what you're describing? Totally. Um, I personally love pre-meeting emails when we're setting up the meeting, um, depending on if it's a contextual meeting, you know, talking about a future project launching or we're having a meeting talking about a specific problem. I think it's really beneficial to, in the meeting notes, 
state, like this is the objective of the meeting and the objective can kind of set the tone for the expectations, if that makes sense. Hmm. Looks like there are another couple of questions in the chat that have come in. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, just reading through them, it might make sense. Um, Hallie, if you want to unmute yourself and just share some context on what you're thinking, and then Eric yeah. and Andy, the same. Well, here's a perfect example. Those of us who are on iPads right now see four people across the bottom and effective meetings on top. How can we, as hybrid participants, make it easier for people to know you know, when to switch gears, show people on the camera more easily, and other ways to improve interactions when it's a hybrid environment like this. Totally. Um, I think that it can be effective, you know, asking maybe having team check-ins about a hybrid environment and saying, how can we get you more involved? Because I think what a lot of companies are seeing right now as they're pulling people into the office and there's some that are staying online is that there's a lot of resistance and so kind of easing that resistance by saying how does our team work best in a hybrid setting how would you like to get more connected with your in and out of office um team members and how are we being team members in that way um whether it's like a weekly check-in just to literally check in or whether it's like we're coming in for coffee once a week in the office or things like that that aren't necessarily wasting your time but are giving that connection. Because I think that question is really specific. And it, if I don't know your team, I don't know what's best because I feel like half of the people are going to roll their eyes about the coffee comment, but you wouldn't know what's best until you ask. I'm looking at the chat right now. Giggle and go Irish, I love it. Um, I'm going to read Taylor's question. Oh, wait. So I, I think you addressed that question. That was my first yeah. one. Allie, I think Eric was asking about the software you mentioned. Okay, so the software I mentioned is called Asana. I'm going to quickly touch on team software because I'm not affiliated with anyone, any of them. And I think they're very, very helpful. Um, Asana is great to keep your team um, connected, even if you're, I've used it in office and out of office settings pre and post COVID. And I think that um, it's really good at keeping you on task. We use a free version of it. I've never worked in a company where they paid to use Asana. And um, it's basically like a task assigning tool. And I think on YouTube, if you just type in Asana how to, it will show you exactly how it works. And um, it's extremely user friendly. And it's not like another like, oh my gosh, I have to learn how to use this software. It's like, oh, this is exactly what I've needed to be able to delegate. Um, which in my mind is like the key to productivity. Asana is A-S-A, -A Hallie just put it in the chat, um, asana.com. Yeah, that should be great. And then um, just touching on more software, I love HubSpot and I personally use the free version of HubSpot for my business and it's been incredible. And I think for team communication that's in and out of office and hybrid, super, super helpful. Again not affiliated. Amelia, do you have any suggestions on how to approach an agenda? One of the notes that Robert shared, um, and I'll, I can share with the group his email, mm -hmm. was that fixed, fixed agendas are the kiss of death. Um, mm -hmm. But totally. so it's, I found it helpful to at least have topics that you want to cover or goals. Do you have yes. suggestions on how to approach that? Yeah. So that's why I touched on that flow state um, because we have this set agenda, we've already established our goals and then we're holding space without wasting time for that flow state because the fixed agenda would be the kiss of death. If you don't know your team, your goals aren't aligned and you don't know how to delegate, right? And so at the end of the meeting, reconvening everything you've hit on in your agenda and then allowing your team members to flow within that and then reiterating what those key points were is the way to not have your agenda be your kiss of death. Some of the other things that I've seen out there, I put a link in the chat about 
a post that I think Scott Chisholm put in there or put on LinkedIn saying there should only be three types of meetings. I mean, it's fairly uh, prescriptive, but mm -hmm. the idea there of what the outcomes of those meetings are in his post, I thought were interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Can you guys see my screen right now? It says affected meetings. Oh, got it. I tried to pull up the LinkedIn post. Um, oh, I think you're sharing a different screen, maybe, or you're in presenter mode still. Got it. Got it. Um, we all should go check out that post. Um, I just clicked on it and saved it. <clears throat> have you uh, have you found like what he was talking about in that post? Different types of meetings. And you set the expectation going in, like this is a decision meeting, this is a strategy meeting, um, this is whatever. Is that totally? Totally. I think for my team specifically, right now, I'll just go through each types of meetings because I think that that's so true. All hands meetings are like me and my team like to have all hands check ins, where we tend to get a lot out of those meetings in a short amount of time where we have been working so autonomously because we're remote that we come together on these all hands meetings. That's like, Hey, what's on the table? What's on your desk today? And then we kind of end up delegating from there and um, using our time wisely, if that makes sense. And then those meetings don't typically have like a strict agenda, but um, let's see the, yeah, the, the all hands agenda is exactly what I just said. It's like, what are, where are you going? What are you doing? And why does it matter? I think if you're on a team that's aligned, you already know why it matters. But the what are you doing question is like, can sometimes be jarring because it feels like you have so much going on, but it brings the top of mind things that you might need help with to the top. Um, the top goal meeting, who, why, when agenda is super helpful for um, like for me, like I expressed at the very beginning of this meeting, my number one goal right now is getting more clients. And um, these are the types of meetings me and my team of there's only three of us. So our, our meetings are like very cut and dry, but so, so beneficial when we really slimmed it down that way. Um, the who is like, okay, who are the people we're like really wanting to hit? Like, why does this matter? And then like when? And so like going through those cadences together. Um, and then the, let's see, I'm trying to go to the next one. One-on-one um, -on -one meetings. I love this. Anytime I've worked in a team that's bigger than the team I have now, I have felt so much more important when I'm meeting one-on-one -on -one with my manager and my boss. Um, I don't know about you guys, but check up on that one person that might be at the bottom of the barrel of the people you've talked to lately on your team, and it will change their productivity of their week. Um, I don't know if you guys would agree, but feeling called out without being called out is like the worst feeling ever. And bringing someone in on a one on one meeting to just chat about their work that you're paying them to do will turn their productivity around. That's awesome. Um, another question I don't think we hit in the chat from Nancy about favorite facilitation tools or techniques. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have any tools or techniques that you have employed in any meetings? Any of the um, meetings you're describing? I think that we personally, I, I if anyone's spent a lot of time in higher education, they've spent a lot of time in unnecessary meetings. And so the the meetings that are very like I've sent the objective we have like a very basic PowerPoint just to show you what we're talking about if you tend to tune out. And then we all are taking notes. It's like the facilitator is responsible for that. And I personally like to use very simple tools. I think it's very commonly overcomplicated. And if you're talking about complicated tech topics or things like that, I'm not the person to talk to, um, but I like to keep things very simple. I I get distracted pretty easily. And so I love to keep it simple because I know my team can get distracted as well. We also take all of our meetings standing up. I'm standing up right now because I couldn't be more engaged. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so facilitating in that way where like when I've logged on the meeting, you know that I'm legitimately up and ready. Um, I know that I have the ball and um, yeah. 
Um, kind of following on that, uh, to Andy's question in the chat, do you have any tips for gently getting meetings back on track when you feel like it has strayed outside of the objective? I think it's perfectly appropriate for the facilitator of the meeting to say, haha, that's awesome. Okay, let's get back on task. I think that legitimately saying those words gets everyone on task because nobody wants to hear that, but also that's not an inappropriate thing to say. And I think that as a society, we've showed like been a little bit more sensitive to things like that, whereas that's not like a super harsh thing to say. And so kind of telling your team gently the legitimate truth, in my opinion, works great. Good. I think setting those expectations up front that that's what the facilitator's job is. Exactly. Is also... And if you do it from the beginning, it's not going to seem stark and harsh because it's not. One of the suggestions that Robert Bishop made in the, his list that he sent me was to have collaborative note taking. I like mm -hmm. that idea of like having a single Google Doc that you share with everybody and mm -hmm. all of the notes go there. Um, what is your approach and how do you suggest effective note taking in totally. a meeting? I think it totally depends on the team. I think that's a given. Um, for me personally, I take all of the notes for my team because my the founder of my company is up here she's talking all up here and so for her to be able to take notes and talk up there is not going to be true she's not going to be speaking on things she needs to be thinking about if she is not letting her brain just go um and so i will be taking the notes and then i'll reconvene with her and make sure that we got everything and i think that's a pretty unique situation for some people i think it can be really helpful to delegate like two or three note takers on a larger team and you have that shared Google Doc with everyone. And so everyone can see um, what everyone is adding, but it's not like everyone's going at once um, because at the end of that, you're going to have like 10 people with their own notes. Um, you need to facilitate a main note taker and then have people adding in freely, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um... I don't want to capitalize the rest of the time. Anybody else have any questions that you would like to throw at Amelia? This has been really helpful. It's been awesome. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> one, uh, one last question, maybe um, around decision making in meetings. Um, how, what have you found as an approach that's most effective when you're in a group to get to a decision versus mm -hmm. just kind of discussing it and going through a filibuster in Congress or something like that? Like, totally. How do you drive to that, those decisions? And when do you make a decision if not everybody is bought in or? Totally. If I think there's two different sides to that. If the group is asking me a question, right, and I'm the I'm legitimately being told to answer, I would organize my thoughts really quickly and instead of just starting to talk. So I would say, hey guys, this is the question. I have a punchline and a headline. You know what I mean? Um, giving my thoughts really concisely on like what I think about the general idea and then the pinpoints of, and this is how I came to that conclusion. This is the problem that we're going through. And I think this and this is why. Instead of just starting to talk about it, because I think we've all been in conversations where we're just talking at one point, we're not getting anywhere. And um, we might be adding more fuel to the fire of the problem of the question. Um, and if the team, if someone is posing a team question, so a question to the whole team, I think it's important for everyone to hold off write what they think down or start talking if it's a smaller group and let everybody talk. Um, because if this question affects the whole group or might 
need everybody's expertise to answer said question, that's a totally different topic. You know what I mean? Um, and so kind of delegating information in the best way possible. So making sure you getting, you're getting everyone's perspective if, if it affects everyone. Um, making sure everyone understands the question and um, then knowing and reminding yourself that you might not be the one that they're asking. They might be asking the group. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, Amelia, really appreciate your time. I think we'll, we'll wrap up for today. Uh, if you could show maybe your slide with the, uh, your email address before okay. everybody leaves, they can pull that out or you can throw it in the chat. Um, and then yeah. Hannah, um, we'll send out a follow-up email to everybody. Is it okay if she shares this slide deck with the group? Yeah, totally. I'll okay. send it to her. And then we'll, I'll also, Robert, include the email that you sent just as another reference and some more resources. But this was super helpful. Thank you, Amelia. I really appreciate your time. And thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll, we'll see you all next week. Awesome. Nice to meet you all. Yeah.